Hi, I'm Gretchen, and we're going to read Nubs. This is the true story about a marine, a mutt, and a miracle. It's written by Major Brian Dennis, Kirby Larson, and Mary Nethery. Let's get started. Outside of a border fort in the desert of western Iraq, a small, thin dog watched and waited. His ears had been cut off to make him a dog of war. He had no name and no person to call his own. Despite his size, he was the leader of his pack, a group of wild dogs that survived by eating desert mice and rats and scraps from the Iraqi soldiers stationed at the fort. As the dogs scanned the desert for a possible meal, the stillness of the fall of the morning was broken by the roar of engines, rumbling closer and closer. He hunkered down in the sand. Three military Humvees carrying Major Brian Dennis and his 10 Marines lumbered to a stop. They were part of Border Transition Team 352, there to help train the Iraqi soldiers. The other pack dogs raced to greet the men. But the dog without ears cautiously approached Brian, who knelt down on one meal, on one knee to meet him. From Brian Dennis, subject, Desert Dog, October 2007. I found a dog in the desert. I call him Nubs because his ears look like little nubs. We clicked right away. He flips his, on his back and makes me rub his stomach. I taught him to sit and shake in about five minutes. I call him nubs because his ears look like little nubs. That night, nubs and Brian ate dinner together they shared Brian's MREs, or Meals Ready to Eat, of spaghetti and Cajun beans and rice. For dessert, Nub sampled a strawberry Pop-Tart, wagging his tail. Later that evening, Nub stayed with Brian when it was his turn at guard duty. Together, they kept everyone safe. The next day, Brian gave Nubs an extra long belly rub. Then he stepped into his Humvee and drove away. The whole pack chased after the vehicles, but quickly lost interest and turned back. Not Nubs. Running faster and faster, he tried to catch up with Brian. He ran for more than a mile. He had no way of knowing that it was against the rules for Marines to have pets. Left behind, Nubs stared at the Humvees as they disappeared into the shining heat of the desert. Long, lonely weeks passed without any sight of that trio of Humvees the Marines called Scout, Boss, and Chuck. At the fort, without Brian, there were no belly rubs. Winter's cold winds began to scour the desert, leaving Nubs scrambling for someplace warm to sleep. As a pack leader, he faced constant challenges from younger dogs. Wanting his job, 
sometimes groups of dogs from other forts fought Nubs and his pack over little food they had. Nubs lived his rough, harsh life, waiting for each time Boss carried Brian back to him. From Brian Dennis, subject, Nubs, November 2007. On our last trip north, I was expecting to see Nubs again. I didn't. We didn't make it as far north as we did last trip, but I still thought I'd see him. I hope that crazy little dog is okay. Near the end of December, when the temperature dipped to a bone-chilling 30 degrees, the Humvees again rumbled up to the border fort. The pack of dogs ran to greet Brian, but not Nubs. He hung back, gaunt and weak, from a deep wound on his side. Shivering from pain, Nubs allowed Brian and the team medics to clean the wound and apply antiseptic ointment from the men's first aid kits. He even swallowed the child-sized dose of antibiotics Brian gave him. But Nubs refused to eat or drink. It hurt so much, he tried to sleep standing up. From Brian Dennis, subject, bad news, December 2007. We tried to put a blanket on Nubs when we bedded down for the night in the desert, but he wouldn't let us. I said a prayer for him. He slept near me. It got down to 18 degrees that night, and I kept waking up to check on him. Every time I woke up, I wondered if he'd be alive. When Brian got up at 4 a.m. for his turn to watch, Nubs stiffly padded into place beside him, head and tail drooping. He faithfully made the rounds with Brian. The next day, Nubs watched as Brian and his team prepared to leave. He touched his nose to Brian's face as Brian bent down to pet him goodbye. He felt Brian's head on his and heard him whispering, Hey, buddy, you need to eat. You need to get better. Then Brian climbed into Boss and the three Humvees pulled away. Determined not to be left behind again, Nubs chased after Brian. He couldn't keep up. Alone, he returned to the fort. See Nubs trying to chase the Humvee? That's called the Humvee. It's like a tank almost. Two long weeks later, Scout, Boss, and Chuck thundered up into Nubs' fort again. This time, Nubs was there to greet them, tail wagging, but still moving slowly. For a few peaceful days, Nubs stuck close to his human pack. Brian took special care of him, doctoring his wound, wound every morning. Nubs gobbled up his share of Brian's MREs, especially the beef patties. They wrestled and played. Give me five, Brian rubbed Nubs' belly every time he asked. If Brian stopped too soon, Nubs pawed him and made him rub some more. Each night after the sun set over the desert, Nubs and Brian did their job together. Under an ice black sky of a thousand stars, they kept watch over everyone. All too soon, it was time for Brian to leave again. Nubs followed close on his heels. Brian tightened his winter scarf a kefia around his neck and then climbed inside the Humvee. He leaned out and said to Nubs, you take care of yourself, buddy. The vehicles rolled across the desert slowly at first, then picking up speed, heading for the command outpost, far away on the Jordanian border. Nubs cried as he chased them across the cold, coarse sand. Because of his wound, he could not keep up. 
he dropped to the ground, exhausted and completely alone. When Nub sat up, Scott, Scott, Scout, Boss, and Chuck were out of sight. He struggled to his feet and began walking. Nubs trekked mile after treacherous mile across the desert, shivering through frozen days and nights. There was little to, to eat and even less to drink. With barely a moment's rest, Nubs pushed on, fighting his way through territories fiercely protected by wolves and wild dogs. Up at the top is where Nubs was, and at the bottom is where Captain Brown was. Two snowy days and 70 miles later, Nubs limped into the Iraqi battalion headquarters where Brian was working. A team member ran inside shouting to Brian, you're not gonna believe who's here. What are you doing here? When Nub saw Brian, he ran with his tongue out and tail wagging right into his arms. What are you doing here? Brian said as he held Nubs close and rubbed him all over. Nubs finally felt warm again. He pressed his wet nose against Brian's cheek. Nubs watched Brian climb into Boss, ordering his team back to the command outpost just a half mile away. I know we're not supposed to have dogs at the outpost, Brian said to his men, but if he follows us, what can we do? Oh, poor Nubs, he just walked like 70 miles. When the Humvees began to roll, Nubs trotted right behind them until they reached the command outpost. Starving and exhausted from his ordeal, Nubs wolfed down pancakes, eggs, and sausages the Marines brought him. He made dog angels rolling all over in the freshly fallen snow. A few days later, he found a brand new dog house built just for him. Look at his dog house. Nubs liked living at the command outpost with Brian and all the other soldiers. He proudly wore a collar the Marines had fashioned from woven bracelets sent to them from school children back home. He cheered up his new friends, collecting belly rubs and making them laugh. And even though he had his own doghouse most nights, Nubs curled up in the barracks with Brian and his team. But everything was about to change. We were given four days to get rid of the dog or else. From Brian Dennis, subject, Nubs Can't Stay. This all came to a crashing halt when two soldiers who were not part of our team reported us. We were given four days to get rid of the dog or else. That night I sat down and talked to my Marines. We knew that if we took Nubs to the fort, he would come back to us. This made the decision easy for me. Nubs was going to America. This dog who had been through a lifetime of fighting, war, and abuse was going to have a nice sunny life and would never be cold again. Nubs sat cl close by as Brian emailed his family and friends back home and he supervised the men as they put up flyers and raised money needed for his journey. Save Nubs Fund. We are trying to evacuate Nubs to the States through Jordan. It's going to cost upwards of $2,000 to do this. If you want to help save Nubs, bring a small cast donation by the BTT by 35COC. Any bit will help and will be much appreciated. If you can even come visit him in San Diego when we get him there. 
This dog found us after walking nearly 70 miles in the desert, and we are going to help him. He is an awesome dog. Look at Nubs. United States Marine Corps Border Transition Team 352 Marine Ex Expeditionary Force from Border Transition Team to Jordanian Border Authorities Passport Travel Documentation Case in the case of Nubs Dennis, a privately owned dog belonging to a U.S. citizen. This paperwork constitutes the passport and travel documentations for one privately owned dog named Nubs Dennis. He is a two-year-old and weighs 14 kilograms. Below is his picture. His U.S. identification number is blah, 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 blah. His final destination will be San Diego, California, United States of America. Nubs was the first to hear the good news. Family and friends wanted to help. Nubs posed for his passport photo. He took three baths in three days to get ready for his trip. That was tiring. On the last day, Brian packed Nubs' brown blanket and his favorite superhero to white. Even dogs have superhero toys. Ryan made a leash for him out of rope. Nubs didn't play with anyone as he usually did. Instead, he sat quietly in the corner. When it was time to go, Brian scooped him up and put him in boss. Together, they drove to no man's land, the zone between Iraq and Jordan. There they met the brother of Brian's interpreter, who had agreed to help get Nubs from Jordan to the States. He was escorted by a Jordanian official. Be good, buddy. Nubs rested in Brian's arms as he was carried to a Land Rover. He felt Brian's breath tickle his ear. Be good, buddy. Don't cause any trouble. These guys will take good care of you. I'll see you in a couple of months. I promise. From Brian Dennis, subject, worry, date, February 2008. I had my interpreter call his brother every 30 minutes. I wanted to know when Nubs was headed out on the highway to Amman. I was sending him off with strangers. I was worried I'd never see him again. Nubs sat at the border checkpoint for hours as officials poured over his paperwork, making sure everything was in order. Finally, Nubs arrived in Amman, Jordan. The King of Jordan's veterinarian gave him his first checkup and shots. He stayed at the vet's kennels while his travel was being arranged. Two weeks later, Nubs flew the 10-hour flight from Amman to Chicago. Friends of Brian's picked him up at the airport. Nubs ate steak and strawberry pop-tarts for dinner. A few days later, Nubs flew out of Chicago on the last leg of his long journey down to San Diego. When Nub stepped off the plane in San Diego, he was greeted with banners and all kinds of cameras. He patiently posed for all the paparazzi, but was glad to leave the airport crowd with Brian's friends, Eric and Chrissy. Nub slept in a comfy new dog bed tried all kinds of tasty food, and went for walks in the dog park. But someone was missing. From Brian Dennis, subject, rock star Nubs, date February 2008. Well, it's official, Nubs is in San Diego, living the good life like a little rock star. 
I can't wait to be home and take them to the beach. On March 23rd, 2008, Eric and Chrissy drove Nubs to Camp Pendleton. The paparazzi were there again. Nubs waited and waited, and then he finally saw Brian. Saw Brian. When he saw Brian, Nubs leaped to his arms and covered him with kisses. There's Nubs waiting and waiting. And then he saw Brian. Today, Nubs and Brian lead a busy life. They play at the dog beach and cruise around in Brian's truck. Sometimes they go running or hike in Mission Trails Regional Park. Nubs romps with his friends, Bogey and Kabali. Nubs even goes to school. His trainer, Graham, gave him straight A's. This small dog has done amazing things in his short life. He chose to travel 70 miles alone across a desert to be with Brian. It was a miracle he survived. The bigger miracle may be that this dog of war chose to become a dog of peace. Now Nubs has a name and a person to call his own, and he shares his friendship and love he found with everyone he meets. But Nubs Nub saves his best kisses for his best buddy, Brian. The end. This says, Howdy, I can, hard, I can honestly tell you that when I met a special little dog with hardly any ears, I, could, I never could have guessed the journey he would take me on. Though we only saw each other every few weeks, he became my little buddy in Iraq. I started calling him Nubs, and the rest is history. It's difficult for me to imagine how hard his life was in Iraq. He lived in a war zone, suffered abuse, and had to fight to stay alive. The fact that he would want anything to do with people after what he went through was, an amazing, was amazing in and of itself. But defying all odds, he bonded with my entire team and lifted our spirits. He would make us laugh when things were tough and always made everyone smile. His incredible act of friendship and devotion is a testament to the bond between humans and animals. It also shows that if you do something kind for someone, dog or human, they will likely never forget it. Nubs now resides with me in San Diego, California. He has a pretty good these days, going on hikes, running around the dog park, and playing with all his friends, Bogey and Kubali. He has adapted to life in the States, but I can't imagine how confusing the changes must have been for him. He doesn't seem to mind, though. Sometimes it almost looks like he's smiling. None of this could have been possible without the support of many amazing people. To everyone who donated and helped out, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Because of all of you, I have a friend for life. Cheers, Brian Dennis. The end. I hope you enjoyed that.